Hello everyone. I'm glad to see you all on my educational channel. And today we are going to read a book. So I'm going to read a book. Yeah, I'm going to read a book about Curious George. Yeah, and Curious George goes to the hospital. So let's start to read. Almost <clears throat> it is the continuation of the of his adventure. Yeah. Do you remember? Okay. Let's read. There were a lot of children in the room. Some were up and around, others were in their birds with a doctor or a nurse looking after them. Dave was having a blood transfusion. Steve had his leg bandaged and was sitting in a go-kart. Betsy was in bed looking sad. George got the bed next to Betsy. George was glad when he was in his bed at last. His tummy was hurting again. The man sat with him for a while. Now I have to leave you, George. He finally said, I will be back first thing in the morning before they take you to the operation room. Last Carol will tuck you in when it's time to sleep. Then he left. George just sat there and cried. As he had promised, the man was back early next morning. The nurses were keeping George very busy. One nurse was taking his temperature, one was taking his blood pressure, one was giving him a pill to make you sleepy, George, she said and one was getting ready to give him a shot. It's going to hurt, George, she said, but only for a moment. She took his arm and George let out a scream. But the needle hasn't touched you yet said the nurse, laughing. There, now, it's done. That wasn't so bad, was it? No, it really was not. And anyway, it was over now. By the time the attendant came with a stretcher to wheel him to the operating room, George was getting sleepy. He tried hard to stay awake. He was curious to see what would happen next. He could see a big table with bright lamp over it and doctors and nurses all around. They had caps on their heads and masks over their faces. Only their eyes were showing. One of the doctors winked at George and patted his head. It was Dr. Baker, who had been to the house when it all had started. He looked funny with his mask on, and then George was fast asleep. When George woke up, he did not know what had happened. He did not even know where he was. Then he saw Ness Carol. It's all done, George, she said. They got the piece out. In a day or two, you will be running around again. The man had brought him a picture book. But George felt sick and dizzy. His throat was hurting, too. He was not even curious about the new book 
He closed his eyes again. We'll let him sleep, said Nes Carol. The more he sleeps, the better. The next morning, George felt better. He even ate a dish of ice cream. Dr. Baker came to see him, and the man, of course, came too. Betsy was watching him from time to time. She seemed a little less sad, but she still did not smile. Steve willed his go-cut over to George's bed. Tomorrow I can get up and try to walk, he said. Boy, I can hardly wait. Take you to the playroom now, George. Nurse Carol says the next morning, and in the afternoon your friend will come and take you home. The playroom was full of children. A lady was showing Betsy how to use finger point. There were all sorts of things to play with, even a puppet theater, and that was just the thing for George. He had four hands, so he so could handle four puppets at the same time. The children laughed and shouted, and even Betsy, for the first time, smiled a little. Oh, sorry, I missed a piece. George gave a real puppet show with a dragon and a clown and a bear and a policeman. There was a TV set in the playroom and also a record player. George was curious if he, if he climbed on the record player and turned the switch, would it go round and round like a real merry-go-round? It did. It started slowly, then it went faster and faster and whoop! Joy had lost his balance and was sailing through the air. Hmm. Okay, let's finish now. So, what do you think? Hmm? What happened to George? Hmm? Have you any guess? Okay, we will check your guess another time. So, if you like this adventure, put a like and see you soon. Bye-bye.